Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another algorithm episode. In today's video, I want to show you how to kind of go through the challenge of drawing a circle inside of your iOS applications. Now, this is typically not something I would give during an on-site interview, but you know, perhaps maybe a take-home exercise instead. So let me show you guys exactly what our algorithm renders out right now. And inside of the iPad Air 2 Simulator, we have this shape, which is a nine-sided polygon. If I modify the algorithm just a tad, it's going to allow me to draw a more perfect version of a circle, which kind of looks like this right here. Let's wait for it to render. And uh, you get this you know, perfect circle, right? Once you are able to kind of learn how to do this, you can transform that application into kind of my meal roulette app right here and uh, apply some rotational transformation and get the animation to look like that. And the basic uh, methodology behind all of these wedges or slices of the wheel is uh, to draw a kind of a smaller section of a entire circle and then fill in the path once you kind of get that section all drawn out. So, you know, nothing too complicated, um, but definitely a lot of coding. So instead of showing you that application, I'll kind of teach you how to render out this circle right here, right now. So shrinking this back to the uh, little top right corner, I want to do this uh, all inside of playgrounds. So some of you guys might be wondering how to render out views inside of playgrounds. And I didn't really know how to do this until I kind of prepared for today's lesson, which is actually quite simple. If you do this right here, let view equals UI view with the frame of CG rect right here. And let's use X, Y of zero, zero with an height of, I don't know, perhaps 400. And that'll give you some kind of view, right? And you say view dot background color equals perhaps dot red. That'll give you something that looks like this right here, this red block. Let me just shrink that down to perhaps 300 for a smaller red block, which is that right there. If you click on this guy, you can toggle the actual rendering of your view immediately. So any change that you make here will be reflected inside of this block uh, in just you know a few seconds. So that's how we will kind of be showing how the rendering works. Uh, in order to draw lines inside of your UI view, you need to override a method inside of UI view called draw rect. So to do that, first you provide your own subclass of UI view like that and override this draw rect method. And let's uh, do some fancy drawing here. And the next question is how do I, how do I even render out lines inside of iOS? Well, you need this thing called a path, which I'll create using this UI Bezier path. And a Bezier path is just a fancy name for a line with two points that has potential curves inside of that line. So we're not going to be going into curves today. So don't be too concerned about that. Uh, essentially, uh, for this path, you need to move to some kind of origin point, which I'll call uh, dot zero, which gives me a point of zero and zero for X and Y. And then finally, I need to establish a second point with an add line method. So let me just use a CG point of uh, X, Y of 100 and 100, and you'll be able to see exactly what this is doing. So path dot stroke. Hopefully I can get this to render out. So nothing here. I don't think, I think I need one more parentheses up here. This is not going to render out that until I take circle right here. Let me just call it circle view instead. Circle view, use circle view down here. And then it's now stroking the line starting from zero, zero, the origin, and then getting up to the 100, 100 on line 14. So pretty straightforward. Uh, not too difficult to follow. And what I want to do now is kind of a, establish how I want to draw out this circle shape. So the initial method I tried was to, let me just comment out this line here. So the initial uh, method was to use something that looked like x squared plus y, uh, y squared equals r squared. And this is a very typical equation of a circle, but using this method was a little bit difficult. So I'm gonna show you the correct way of doing this instead. All right, 
Now the way to kind of draw uh, lines while iterating through a loop is something I want to show you first. So for i in something called a stride, which is a little confusing, but let's see. Uh, so, okay, from 0 to 180 with a by of 10. If you print out what i is, the console will show you exactly what it's doing. So it goes from 0 to 10 up to you know 170. And then it does it again. I don't really know why, but Playgrounds is a little, a uh, little strange from time to time. If you run this inside of your app, it actually just iterates once, or it does the looping once. So with this i value, what you can do is you can say path dot perhaps at line, and you can use cg you know points of some kind of x y value of perhaps i and i. Let me just comment that guy out. And uh, if you do that, you pretty much get a diagonal line. If you go up to exactly what the width value is, it takes you all the way down to the bottom right corner. Let's use 310. It takes you down to the bottom right corner right there. So that's how this stride guy works. Now what I want to do is to kind of figure out what these x, y values are for this circular shape here. And the idea behind it is to kind of understand how to arrive to x and y based on the degrees right here. So this stride value, I want to uh, draw this circle from 0 to 180 degrees. So this would be 0 from the right side right here, and 180 would go uh, clockwise to the other kind of half of the circle right here. And how do I do that? Well, let me illustrate this using a really, really neat graphic that I found online. And this graphic kind of comes to the conclusion of x equal to cosine theta and y equals to sine theta right here. So theta is the circle with a line through it. And at first looking at this, I didn't really understand how they arrived to this conclusion. But basically, going back to high school trigonometry, I believe, uh, there is a law or a, some kind of rule formula that says that if you have a right triangle like this with x and y, you can take the cosine of theta and it is equal to the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse, which is the diagonal one right here, which is also known as r, the radius of the entire circle. So writing that down, what you get is this right here. So let me just simplify this with some comments. So cosine of Let's see if I can get theta here. So I have theta in my other file, which says that cosine of theta equals the x, the adjacent over the radius, which is that one value right there. And then solving for x, what you get is x equals r times cosine of this theta guy. And then likewise, if you want to do sine of theta, it is equal to the opposite, which is this y, over the one value, which is the r. So over r, again, you solve for y equals r times sine of theta. So if you don't understand this part of the math, you know, just make sure to, you know, look up and do some research on it. Uh, something that you definitely learned in high school trigonometry. And here we go. We have x and y equal to these two values. And basically we have i somewhat. So if you say let x equals r times cosine, which is this method here, cosine, takes in a double value, and let's just assume i is theta. You pretty much have x right here. So what is r? Well, I want to define what r is by saying let radius equals perhaps 100. And I'm going to take radius and place it in here. So if we do that, we actually need perhaps uh, radius to be double and then cosine actually also takes a double and if you want to apply the double here you can do that which gets your x to be okay and finally with this warning I will do it a little bit easier by changing this to 180.0 changing all the i values to a double automatically okay so a neat little trick and what you want to do now is to also calculate what uh, y is by saying let y equals radius times sine of i. All right, so those are the two x, y values that kind of belong in here. And if I uncomment that, 
perhaps remove that print statement you get uh, X here and Y there so this is adding all of these points inside of my path and the uh, the resulting rendering does this kind of star uh, drawing of what my circle needs to be the reason why it's doing this star guy is might be a little confusing so okay so to kind of illustrate what's going on right here I want to print out exactly what these X and Y values are so I'm going to print out X and Y here and down in the console we'll see exactly what these values are being calculated to be and so the first value says 100 and 0 which kind of makes sense which is over here somewhere and then it goes into the negative goes into the positive and then positive negative which doesn't make a whole lot of sense so what's really happening here is that this cosine and sine method what it really needs to take in is uh, not a degree value is what we are kind of setting it to be here with this i guy from 0 to 180 what it really needs is a radian value so if some of you guys remember radians you can convert radians from degrees if you use this method right here degrees times uh, pi over 180 this is just a mathematical equation that you have to recall and if you set radians equals degrees which is i times double of pi which is how you get pi and divided by 180 finally inside your cosine and sine method you just apply the radian instead of the degree of i and then you look down here you get an actual circle rendering so to move it over a little bit you just have to establish what the center point of your circle is in other words i want to establish center right here so let center equals some kind of point value and to make this easy to follow i'm going to use the rex width over two so rect width over two and rect width see rect dot height over two and that pretty much gives me the center point of the entire frame and then finally for these x and y values i'll add center dot x plus that and center dot y plus that and let's just see if this actually takes in what i need so i think if i convert this to a double that'll be okay also convert this to a double because this right side is a double so you do that it shifts the circle to the center of the entire frame if you want to move the origin point from zero zero to perhaps over there you can do that if you change this sign right here so i want to get the move line cut that paste that in here instead of moving to the zero origin let's use the cg points of x let's see get the autocomplete here and the x will be center dot x plus radius here see if that works and this will be a center dot y i think i need to convert one of these guys over to a cg float perhaps let's use this one cg float and uh, now these two values will match so going down here you get half of the circle uh, to get the complete circle uh, what you need to do is to use a value of 360 or 370 here so 360 gives you most of the circle which looks like that to get the final chunk if you move this up to 361 it'll draw out that last uh, bit of that circle so that's kind of what you get let me get rid of this print statement here and if I want to perhaps change the thickness of this stroking to make it show up a little better you can say path dot uh, line width equals five and I think you need to stroke it after so you get the stroke and then you get a thicker line like that if you want to change the radius to be exactly the frame you can just apply the same logic of rect dot width over two perhaps and then you get uh let's see this needs to be a double i believe so double change the width value from cg float to double and then you get this right here if you want to subtract a little bit from the radius you can just subtract it there and it'll render out a smaller circle like that so finally 
what you can do is, you see how the edges are a little bit sharper? I don't know if you can tell, but you can modify this to be a interval of 40, which looks like that. If you want to make it really, really fine grain in terms of the degrees that you're going around the circle with, you change the value to one or anything small, smaller than one will get you this circle right here. And I believe if you change the uh, stroke color to some kind of UI color dot red dot set stroke, you can modify this stroking to be this reddish color like that. So that's how that works. Okay, so that's gonna be it for today's lesson. Really hope you learned how to draw out a couple of new things inside of your UI views, as well as how to apply mathematical logic to render out a couple of really cool looking shapes. And finally, if you wanna download the project for today's video, you can find the link in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Hopefully I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye guys.